Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Eli. Hello. Hey, Christian. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for staying up late. Uh, uh, it's a bit of a time difference on your travels now, but uh, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you currently and permanently, and yeah. what do you do? Yeah, so as we start, thanks for, first of all, thanks for having me. My name is Eli Karkafi. Um, 35 years old and originally I'm from Lebanon, but I work for a company headquartered in Dallas, Texas. It's a company um, called MPU Solution. Um, we focus on technology solution that help the organization amplify the technology that's run on their business by simplifying the software implementation. And MPU Solution is a Microsoft partner as well. Mm -hmm. So back to me now, I'm a senior solution architect with more than 12 years of professional experience and in-depth experience in Azure Cloud, Cloud Security, Messaging and Collaboration, and IT infrastructure. So, and currently I'm a new, and or actually recently, I'm a new MVP for the security category. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I always okay. like to ask that, like, uh, you know, what was your journey to becoming an MVP? Like, what what was the path? What was the process? How long was it? Something that you pursued, or is it something you just kind of fell into? Yeah, okay. actually, um, if I need to get back in the day when I start my journey in the IT field, um, I used to join a company after my graduation or as a senior system administrator, where I have to deal on daily basis with Active Directory. We started working on Active Directory in 2003 or two, and I was supporting all the creation user flow and all the group policies. So from that day, I had the passion about identity. And then after discovering that, and as you know, um, we were introduced to Azure, the first time um, at 2014, mm -hmm. because as you know, historically, um, Azure started um, to show up in 2008, but was named as a uh, Red Dog project, as I remember, Red Dog project, then they renamed it in 2014 to Windows Azure, then in 2015, they named it Microsoft Azure, where in 2015, they introduced the first time the Azure AD Connect. And since I, I was working in the Middle East area and most of the companies was um, dealing with their private infrastructure and the Asian AD Connect came and we start thinking how we're gonna sing and move to a hybrid environment using the Azure AD Connect by thinking the identity. And for the my MVP journey it actually started by coincidence. I used like to, um, when I'm into troubleshooting something during my work, I used to use tech community, Microsoft tech community. And one day um, I was searching for a couple of um, solution related to my work on Active Directory. And I was scrolling down with the, all the discussion raised by the tech. And I found out that I know a lot of answers I could answer. So, I decided to create my own profile on the tech community. And here I start grabbing accepted solution, talking with the techs, private messages, and by discussion. And here I found out, okay, what is the next step now? What I should do? Um, I need to think more about this or just like doing some, uh, some um, social engineering at my free time. So I just thought, okay, identity, access, what else? I need to, to start dealing with some cloud security features and capability. And then I decided to look, I decided to look um, in the defender capability. 
Mm -hmm. And all the cloud security, um, let's say, ecosystem that Microsoft provides. So um, I decided to join the customer connection program where I became a like, member of eight of Zoo's um, private community. And, you know, when you want to be an MVP, you want to be in direct contact with all the product team from Microsoft to introduce yourself, let them know you, and start contributing like heavy contribution. Don't miss any survey, don't miss any private feature, don't miss any feedback. It shades every one-to-one -one focus um, meeting with everyone in Microsoft. And that's how it starts. Well, that's a great point because it's, because uh, yeah. I think for a lot of people that ask that question, like, you know, what what is the process of becoming an MVP? And and there's no, that's why I like to ask the, the origin story question um, because there are, you know, patterns there that are there. And uh, one of them is, uh, you know, anybody can go in and get involved in tech community or any other forums. I mean, there's other locations as well um, to just start answering questions and sharing. And, and maybe you, somebody's already answered the, the problem, but that you have a slightly different perspective. You, uh, yeah. you, you know, for that's, that's related to your industry, for example. But to share, regardless of whether a question's been answered or not, to join in on the on the discussions, uh, I know that there are stories of MVPs who have kind of fast tracked that process that you went through, like years of doing that, where they and and the, I think that the deciding factor was that somebody from Microsoft just happened to be there at an event, like it was somebody who got fast tracked very quickly they got brought up on stage at a small regional event but the microsoft people were there and so here was yeah. somebody who answered a question there and so very quickly got that visibility if you don't have that benefit you're right i mean it's it's building the relationship with the microsoft personnel find out who the microsoft people are in your region even if you don't yeah. have people that are on the product team on the engineering side like here where i live in utah there's a sales office and there's technical people, there's engineers and things that are there, but it's predominantly salespeople that are out of this regional office. And so you could go get to know those folks as well. Um, that's a great way to, to start developing those relationships. Yeah, actually, um, to be honest, at my first journey in the MVP, it was very tough for me because I didn't have anyone um, mentoring me to know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. But things get easier when I joined the customer connection program mm -hmm. where I met a lot of the CCP lead there. And also I met some of the MPPs such as Chris Ford, for example. Yep. I became friend, friend with him and he started like, giving me advices and encouragement. Do that, do that, don't do that. Um, and also what I did, um, I decided to turn on every use case in my world as a blog, you know? So every use case, it happened with me because we deal with a lot of companies that are small and mid-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. And those small companies don't know the importance of having a cloud data security or any cloud security um, capabilities for their environment because I always tell my customers that it's good to have the latest technology and messaging and collaboration and the latest innovation of all the apps with Microsoft. But without protecting your data, it's meaningless. Yeah. So yeah, well, always it, is good. Yeah. It and also there's there's from a so I want I always like to kind of follow up the origin story question with like what are what are your primary contribution types? Like you talked about taking your use cases, converting, like creating blogs. That's something that I know it's, it's difficult for a lot of people. I had to make that change years ago to, to, I always refer to it. Those of us in the collaboration, social collaboration side, call it, you know, working out loud. It's how mm -hmm. do you make 
the, your contributions more transparent without being like, hey, look at me. I'm doing all these wonderful things for the community. No, don't do not do that. Uh, yeah. But you, you want to raise awareness of that. Well, some of it is like you're doing the work with customers in the background go and summarize those things, share what you can, uh, obviously anonymize customer data without permission, you know, don't, no. n- don't name brands, um, yeah. but blog about it, write about it, so share what your experience was, you know, yeah. whether it was a novel approach, something that was unique and new that you went and created, or it was an implementation of something that's been done a million times out there, but share your experience, your learning path, Again, work out loud, share, share that your, your journey on those things. And that, that content is valuable. It could reach people that in your industry with similar background or in your region or, or wherever that like your voice, like your tone, uh, you know, will start communicating with you. You're, you're going to help an individual. Um, There's value there. You know, all we have to do is help one person. It's, you know, the value is there. Yeah, actually, um, I believe um, to be a good MVP, you need to follow uh, what we say, sharing is caring. So um, it's always a good thing to share, even a use case with your client, um, convert it to a generic use case and post it, whether on LinkedIn, whether on the tech community, let the people that suffer on their daily basis finding solution uh, to their problem, um, maybe you will be the one that will solve their, their day or their weeks. So um, for a certain problem, you know, and that's how I work. Because I spend a daily, daily um, hours on tech community. Mm-hmm. I also, for sure, um, I don't miss any um, private preview in the customer connection program because I'm the I'm ranked second on the M365 Defender community and also I'm a rock star in the Intra community as well. And, and for um, those that that's a title, yeah. folks, he's not just calling himself a rock star. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a title given by Microsoft. I'm not giving yeah. myself a title. So um, actually, MVP for me is not a title, and it's not about ego for sure. And not like uh, putting badge on your shoulder. Um, it's a passion of what I'm doing and what I love to do. And when people got MVP, they believe that they want to sit back and relax and that's it. That's the end of the story. Now, I would say it's just the beginning of more contribution and more responsibility towards your community um, to, to keep helping people. Yeah. Well, and yeah. there are, and for folks that don't understand that too, it's that it, it's a, it is an award given for the previous year's contributions and there are people that, you know, jobs change, um, passions change. And, and so they just kind of drop out. And, and, and so again, leave the community, they don't get renewed as an MVP, but you're right. You know, the majority of MVPs, once they you know, receive the, that award and there are perks, we get, you know, deeper connections with closer connections with the product teams, with the marketing yeah. teams inside Microsoft. We get NDA previews of things. We get to see the roadmap. We get to provide our, our feedback into that. I mean, there yeah. are huge benefits to being in the program. And that generally inspires MVPs to do more, which yeah. makes it tougher for new MVPs to come in. <laughs> you know, not that I don't think there's a like I don't believe that there's a fixed number of like Microsoft says a no, we have enough MVPs, therefore someone has to leave to come in. It kind of ebbs and flows like the total number of MVPs. I think we're around somewhere in the 3,500 to 4,000 globally across all the different areas. Um, so there's plenty of room for new people coming in, but right. that is something that you need to look at like, what are the other MVPs doing? I need to at least be on that level to be considered. So I, I always say that, uh, you know, obviously it's the quality of the contributions, but there's something to be said about volume of contributions as well. 
I don't know what the right number is. I don't yeah. Know. There's no fixed number. Everybody's no. different. Um, I don't think so. Even on a, like, from the CCP itself, like, um, go go and test private preview each day and filling surveys and it's all count as a contribution but um dealing with your job and um the microsoft private community at the same time it requires a lot of effort um because you need to provide a valuable feedback to, to make the microsoft product well known and also which month which more important is to let the Microsoft product team knows you and trust you. Um, being an MVP, it's not something um, unachievable and it's not easy. You need to work yeah. hard. That's yeah. how I believe. And yeah. <clears throat> I, I think you're right because it's uh, and know, now a Microsoft lot of a lot of the calls. Right. I mean, there's so many different calls that we could participate in the NDA calls that I, I just, I, I can't, my, my, my job, I'm, you know, I'm on the board of another company. I advise a couple other startups. Like I've got meetings, standing meetings that overlap every month, the regular calls. But what I do is I try to um, go back and watch the recordings. Um, and um, the other thing that I do is when there are other, when product team members reach out, like you say, with, with surveys, or if they're looking for help for guidance and something, if people that have experiences, if I, if anything overlaps, I respond to all of those things. I think I have more inter interaction with Microsoft personnel that are not part of those scheduled monthly calls in each of the different categories that I do inside those, those meetings. So yeah, it's uh, you, you need to find that balance, but I think it comes back to kind of what you said. It's, it's um, you know, surfacing those right things, finding what you're passionate about, and right. I always, and I, so actually with those, I don't know if you're aware of this, Eli, but uh, so Sharon and Weaver and I, uh, we started up last fall, we actually run a mentoring group for people that are interested in becoming MVPs. We've mm -hmm. now had two people within our cohort that have become MVPs. So if anybody out yeah. there, if you're interested, if you're thinking you're doing enough in the community, you'd like to participate, we're doing a monthly call. It's the first tuesday or wednesday i think it's wednesday of each month um morning you know in the u.s so you know might have to adjust your time accordingly but you know just you can reach out to me on linkedin or, or out on twitter or something but um yeah i mean that that what we talk about is building healthy habits find those yeah. things that you're passionate about if if you're in there doing blogging about use cases sharing out loud your experiences and you don't enjoy that process then being an mvp is probably not for you right yeah definitely and it's required based on my experience also it requires the support of the people around you like your family your family because i'm a married person require because you need to have a full dedication sitting on your desk doing a lot of testing um, reading, searching, and also it requires also the support of your colleagues. And I believe I'm a lucky person because my president at Apple Solution, um, Joe Halaf, is an ex Microsoft employee for 25 years. So he knows what is MVP. Yeah. And he knows about my passion because he's a passionate person as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's about, I believe it's about dedication and set a goal and work hard to meet that goal. It's not only about the title to be an MVP, it's, um, it's a payoff. And uh, for sure, Microsoft will give you a lot of exposure. So I advise all the people that want to become MVP whether to contact you because having like a mentor during the journey, it's absolutely um, a great way to make the road more easier because Getting an MVP alone is tough, you know. You need the mentor um, to help. Well, you. well, plus now you do need to have an existing MVP or a Microsoft employee has to submit yeah. your name for consideration for it as well. So developing yeah. those relationships are key. So I mean, that's why I would say if there's right. a an MVP, now it's not just getting to know the Microsoft people within your region, within your town, 
Um, but also um, go and look and see if there are any MVPs. If you're not aware, if you go to mvp.microsoft.com, you can search by region, by category. You can find people that are around you. Reach out and develop relationships with those MVPs. We all, MVPs love connecting with people and building our all networks. Right. So if you come right. and express to us, you know, your interests and get to know us, then that's something that we can definitely talk to you about and help you along that path as well. Yeah, definitely. And it's always it's good to stay humble after getting an MVP. Yes. Well, that's an interesting topic we could talk about for a while, but yes, I agree. Yeah. And, uh, it has, I, I, I I, I actually have a sticker that I created based yeah. on some not so humble MVPs and, and community people where it's a, it's a big joke where I have a sticker that's a meme and has, it's like, don't you know who I am? And you think, I'm an MVP. <laughs> yeah. You, you no. think of that. Well, it actually, the, the, there's a story behind that, but somebody actually was at an event, didn't get a, somebody who had always spoken at this event, and but didn't get one of his abstracts accepted so yeah. he was not a speaker and he was angry at that he didn't get accepted for this free community focused event because he submitted one topic and they already had that topic covered he didn't submit any other abstracts so they rejected him and he was just angry and uttered those words don't you know who i am and i just thought it yeah. was the just kind of that peak of, you know, of vanity of, of, of the roles. It's like, Hey, you, you need to have yeah. humility. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're just individuals. We're doing our best, you know, uh, the, the creators of that event, the organizers of that, that event um, did their best to, to pull together an event that made sense for everybody there. But I, I don't get angry. I don't get upset. If I don't get selected, I look at it every time when my session gets a session gets selected. I, I, I I'm honored that it, that it did that. I'm glad that it fits in that I could add value to that event. Um, yeah. And I'm just happy to be there. Yeah. Correct. For me also. So for example, being an MVP in the security category doesn't mean that I know everything in the security. We are learning every day. We are learning something new every day, every second. So, yeah. Yeah, but no, and I would I completely agree. While I don't yeah. know everything, I might know somebody that knows the answer. I'm I'm pretty good at connecting people Correct. to others. And that's uh, that's another yeah. benefit with having a relationship with an with a with a, an MVP. Exactly, and people will accept your whether on LinkedIn or. People when they saw that you are an MVP, they will um they will be aware of you, you know, and yep. they will reply to you directly because you're holding that title. Yep. Um, yeah, that's good as well. Well, Eli, I really appreciate your time and getting to know you today. Uh, for folks yeah. that want to connect with you, reach out and find you. Where are you most active in social? Um, most active on LinkedIn on my page. I post all my blog and post there, and also on Twitter as well excellent yeah. well we'll have the links out on the blog post and on youtube and appreciate your time thanks Richard, for having me and i appreciate all the hard work that you are doing and that'd be great okay. <laughs>